back again. So, uh, yes, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of laughter, a lot of uh, levity. And uh, a lot of integration. Um, I didn't know if I was going to be able to make a video because uh, I just I just kept fucking crying. <laughs> uh, yeah. Every time I felt deeply and I and went down deep, it just the tears started flowing, and it's beautiful just just to allow it, allow the healing. In the uh, the sacred uh, f fluctuations and the fluidity to happen. So first and foremost, I'm gonna show show y'all what are we drinking on. So I don't know. How, I don't know how the fuck to say that. Citru sinensis. <laughs> to go along. Oh, of course, you know, lovely seven seven point seven there. To go along with the uh, cubensis, doing its thing inside of me. And I, I've done this uh, microdosing now with with these fun fun guys uh, enough that it's like this is the third time and it, and it pretty much straight out was like okay okay <laughs> you get the fucking point now now do the whole shebang like yeah. this this is what uh what what it's time to do which. Is what I'm all about, but I know that I'm going to need to fast my body. And uh, do some things like, you know, uh, conserve my uh, sexual energy. And uh, along with the fasting. And then... We will initiate. So yeah, this is your boy Troy Casey here once again. Uh, he, I think he has his second uh, ceremony, and uh, yeah, he's he's been having a lot of healing with uh, the person that he's with there in the bed. <laughs> and sexual healing can be uh, some of the most transformative stuff. The uh, tantric love, uh, diving deep down into the like, deep down into the healing, to where the, the physical actions aren't really even the, the main thing. It's just that connection. And I mean, uh, if you can get a partner that that is uh, has done enough inner work. To where you don't actually even need to have like a uh, physical uh, sex. You can just kind of hold hands and connect in that kind of level. Or even not in any kind of a physicality. But just unite on a deeper, deeper level. That can be uh, the most ecstatic experience. But you know, uh, this is levels and layers here, people. Like we're uh, we're kind of uh, weaving our way back into a uh, point of remembrance. Of what it's really all about.
So yeah, we'll get into this. Uh, Mm -hmm. I will also give a shout out to Yuvraj. I watched your most recent video. Um, yeah, it's just speaking to the choir, dude. Like, If you want to find people who are on level, we out you. So there's no there's no point in engaging people who who haven't done the inner work. Okay, you're just uh, wasting your time and energy. But also, you know, you can have fun with it. You you can do so in ways where it leaves people guessing. It leaves them like, what the fuck? But ultimately, it leaves them with a. Uh, a lasting memory of okay this was weird this was kind of like uh what the fuck but like they want to know more like they'll they'll uh that that thing is it's planting seeds bro it's just fucking planting seeds you don't need to have anyone as your enemy like anyone as your fucking enemy and i i know where you're coming from absolutely with what you're saying like the intent the essence i get that shit dude <laughs> we out you. We we we've got, we've been up through this shit. All right. It's not a uh, a friend or foe thing. It's not an enemy thing at all. It's a dissolving thing. It's a uh, calming of the angst that uh, you have woken up to, and that's just going to take time and experience, bro. And uh, learning how to navigate people and experiences so that you aren't, you you don't allow yourself to get caught up in, in the bullshit because you, you are well aware it doesn't fucking matter. So, so have fun with it. Plant your seeds and just fucking have levity with it. Be fun. <laughs> you don't need to you don't need to get all fucking serious and worked up over it necessarily. And that's easier said than done, of course, because you know, of course this is serious shit, but this is the beauty of it. It's just to have fun with it. How to navigate it and uh do so in a way where we are planting our seeds but also just dancing and flowing. Not getting too heavy. Unless, you know, we're, we're, we have that one-on-one -on -one connection or, or a certain communion uh, with, with individuals involved where you know, it's time to get heavy. It's time to have ceremony. And that's a little different. That's what we're going to kind of get into here. Which is, uh, I don't know, this is, this is, this, just, this is just the expression, the uh, manifestation here, the outward reflection what I've been doing inside. <laughs> so, um, yeah, man. With you? Yeah, so there's just a lot of fucking uh, energies coming about with this. Uh, I've been uh, having a lot of female energies lately uh, in my experience. And, and uh, knowing now from, from experience how to navigate it and 
what to look for essentially with within another individual like it's not it, it never really was a, a lust thing for me it's always a deeper connection thing for me and um, um, the, the harsh experiences that I've had in this life where uh, people aren't ready or are willing to have these kind of deep connections and the whiplash and backlash that has that has upon the people the person that uh, seeks that um, whichever side that is on in, in that kind of relationship but also I just wanted to <laughs> take a moment here and say uh, congratulations Danny Skylark I uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna go ahead and say, you know, what I'm. What I'm saying. <laughs> Why I'm saying what I'm saying, but I didn't know which way it was going to go, and so from the outside looking in, uh, it's beautiful and. Uh, It's gonna have a lot of a uh, of essences coming in because uh, all this stuff's happening for a reason. You you know how it goes, dude. There are so many essences uh, coalescing uh, within you, and uh, you know what you're. You know what you have been giving birth to even before all this, so. We gonna be in communion, <laughs> cause uh, anytime someone's going through this, I, I want them to uh, be in the uh, most optimum place and state that they can go through it. And uh, just just to reinsure connections to. Uh, To make sure that the connections are, are being integrated and, and felt and engaged. So this is a very, uh, very hmm. it's a communal thing here that you're going through. If you haven't already felt that. Like what you have been going through is leading you, has been leading you up to this. It's been preparing you for this. <laughs> and yeah, I'm right there with you with, with all the bare energies. I, I'm yeah. I'm finding things and then people talking about bears. So it's just out of the blue, randomly, right? <laughs> and uh, I find myself reminiscing upon just just weird things. And then, oh, hey, there's bears in that memory as well. So it's very, very interesting, intriguing. <laughs> Assistant director here. Jerry's right hand man, but Jerry's not here. I think he was talking to me about he's got a new documentary coming out. Um, it's about the eighth, eighth Bachakuti. I believe it's directly related to the eagle and the condor prophecy, mm. which basically states that, you know, man was separated a long time ago, and, uh, indigenous people almost got extinguished from the whole, you know, conquistador situation, you know, almost perished, you know, and this was prophesied a long time ago, 
it said it about 500 years after that from a time when the eagle and the condor will reunite. So the eagle is representative of uh, North America and the condor is representative of South America. In this kind of uh, mentality uh, of, uh, of the reality of the prophecy, and I mean, just 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 think like North and South, or it's called both called Americas, right? There's, there's not supposed to be a separation there, or a uh, even a polarization, but. It is what it is, and we're working with what we got. So this uh, reunion and communion is happening with the medicines, with the deep level shamanics that's happening. That uh, that uh, not very many are privy to uh, these these inner workings unless you're able to uh, disregard everything every single thing that you've been led to believe outside of you and you go completely within and you listen again to the nature and to the winds and to the living book that is uh, the word of God If you can read from that book, then, then you know what's going on. You don't need to project or tell anyone anything. Because you, cause you just feel it. You know where your energy needs to be. And you engage it. So, uh, yes, indeed, we are going to have a flipping of the poles. Oh my gosh. North is going to become south. We are going to have the wisdom of the indigenous of the south come up into the north. And the intellect, cold, icy mentality, the sharpness, the speed of the mind be integrated into the south. And we're going to have a union happen. That is happening. It is happening. It represents the technological advancements of the mind. Condor represents the heart based wisdom of the heart. And it can also be said that the mind and the heart will be joined as one. Well, this is what it is. The uh, macro of the micro that's happening. The bridge that's that's being strengthened for more and more people to uh, be able to walk upon and to realize that they can walk upon it. They can uh, let go of the things that have bound and binded them. It's a union, uh, a reunion <laughs> within this communion. It's a perfection of uh,
a realization And slowly, bit by bit, working your way up to an engagement of this realization. one that I did I think I may have skipped maybe maybe I I, I showed it maybe I didn't where uh, where he said <laughs> where he said it's happening which was fucking great and then uh, and then this you know I keep getting uh, things presented to me that's like oh wait like uh, this is unstoppable I'm like okay I'm, I'm getting this specific message of un unstoppable but like, what is this pertaining to? What is unstoppable? I mean, truly I know, deep down, but it's just a very uh, distinct and specific message. So we have to kind of discern and decipher what it means for us and then what it means collectively as well where we fit into the equation. We are here to usher in the next level of human consciousness. And this medicine, ayahuasca, and I've made many videos about it before, but ayahuasca is powerful medicine many of these plant medicines are. Yeah. So I'm here with 70 people and they're, they come from all walks of life. And uh, men, women, mothers, daughters, a lot of people brought their whole family here for healing. And to have these shamans talk, this guy Brad, man, he is off the hook. Just... <laughs> And I have a lot of Brad energies in my life that, uh, not a lot, but like specific ones that, um, I have a deep, uh, engagements with. Solid brother. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And that's, that's, uh, my experiences with the Brads, uh, the be reds. They are very red. And they they just be. This time you do during the ceremony and he came up with uh -huh. a blessing with some floral water or something. I just looked him in the eye and I said, I like you dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh it's just one of those earth brothers, a fucking warrior, man. And a damn good shaman, man. The mark of a great shaman is coherent. They're all of them. Oh. Yes. Uh, perception. The, the per perceptivity of the um, integration. The integral work that's happening within the heart, um, dissolving the mind back into the heart and holding space for this. Heart. All heart. Yeah. Yeah. Magic and wisdom of shamans down here. <sighs> they just hold the energy really powerfully. And I've worked... Mm -hmm. I was once told by a be rad that if I uh, if I ever went to an ayahuasca place I probably would never come back and at the time 
And even still, it's like, ah, uh, with this specific B Rad, it's like, uh, he didn't quite. He he felt what uh, the energies that he was dealing with, but he didn't quite uh, emote or express them um, in accurate ways. So uh, whenever that happened, I, I was like, "Who?" I, I was kind of um, drawn away from um, from a deeper connection, especially when someone aligns themselves with a very specific thing or movement or ideology or belief structure then uh, that that brings upon limitations as well it, it can bring upon you know for the person what they need in the moment um, revelations but whenever they are dealing with uh, beings who um, are well beyond all of that. Um, it, it's hard to get really down deep into the uh, intrinsic essence of what the isness is. Especially when other people are around, because these things need to happen on a one-on-one -on -one level and this is why where I recommend you know having a shaman or a ceremony or, or a person holding space where it's just one-on-one -on -one. unless unless you you can find yourself in, in a position yourself purely where you're in, in these kinds of uh, situations and uh, you're, you're at a location where you are surrounded with shamans who who are used to engaging the flow and the energy of the group but even even with this like this is a I think this is beautiful and and this is absolutely paramount and amazing with sharing the medicine and the, and the wisdom and the integration but this is um this is just kind of like initiatory stuff because uh, if you want to go down deeper you need to have a uh, interpersonal like like one-on-one -on -one kind of level of, um, of of a happening and it's not student teacher necessarily it, it is it's just that it keeps flipping back and forth this, this, who is the student? Who is the teacher? The shop, the true shaman recognizes that he is learning just as much from the person um, integrating the medicine. That is the sign of the true shaman. Indigenous shamans for many years, and um, I think anyone who commits their life to working with the medicine, not anyone, because there's some screwballs out there, there's exactly. some brujos, exactly. brujos. black magicians and yes. stuff, you know, watch out for those guys, Yes. Uh, protect yourself, you know, make sure you know who you're going to drink medicine with, and, yes. yes. and make sure you know your inner state. Make sure you know how to protect yourself. So, you know, Michael Backwood gave his blessing to this place. And so did Graham Hancock. Yeah. And, uh, and Mark Victor Hansen. And uh, I think Deepak Chopra might have as well. I'm not sure. But, I mean, this, this place that's set up down here really to usher in this next level of consciousness. I mean, there's so many agape practitioners that are down here mm. right now as well. And, uh, you know, it just... Mm. I, don't, I don't even know if I can, you know, sum up the ineffable. No, it's beyond um, words. One thing that came to me tonight was... Uh, 
humor and just yes. fucking cracking jokes, man. And, uh, and that's been like uh, the the essence. It's, it's, there's been a shamanic happening um, happening on the macro, and I, I feel it um, on my micro. And even though like everyone else like necessarily isn't um, in the loop or like in the know with the gnosis, on some level they feel it. So uh, there's just been a levity lately, and uh, I just I just want to spread that awareness and that uh, engagement. And the reminder that you have a choice to choose how you perceive your reality. Yes, it may seem doom and gloom, or it may seem like, you know, you're going through the, the most hellish of hells. But you still have a choice how you choose to engage it, how you choose to integrate it. And that is the most beautiful fucking thing that you have a choice how to experience. That is the gift. The gift. That you have a choice. So engage that. Recognize that. Remember that. Oh my god. And the last time I was drinking ayahuasca in the Amazon in 2012, I just kept being reminded by my friend Dave Colbert. He's this actor and comedian, and he's hilarious. Mm -hmm. You can watch my YouTube video I did. I think it's a Certified Health Matter CHN number one fan. Plays this character Bob. Anyway, I'm going to bring him back on the show as soon as I get back to Los Angeles. In fact, when I finish this video, I'm going to send him a text. It's fucking hilarious. Just, I've, I've been having just weird Bob synchronicities and, and whatnot. So, I'm going to end this with, with another card that I pulled. And this is uh, humorous to me in that um, a, a message that I sent to Danny was uh, I, I kept uh, putting in Firebird. I, 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 but then I was I, but then I was like I wanted to integrate Phoenix into it, so I just in, ended up. Um, putting Phoenix in, in the place of Firebird. And then one should know it. The card that I pulled. The embodiment of the phoenix. Beautiful. So I'll read from the book. Firebird keywords. Hope and magic. Brilliance. Divine protection. The Firebird card promises unexpected help just when you need it most. A fantastical bird with brilliant plumes of flames finds its origin in Russian folklore. That's fucking perfection. Where she is presented as a shape-shifting half-bird, half-woman creature. 
the firebird's magical feather offered protection to those fortunate to possess it and enabled her to successfully wage battle against the villainous wizard. Mm. Her story was popular, popularized in a ballad whose music was composed by Igor Stravin Stravinsky. <laughs> The Firebirds' 1910 premiere at the Ballots Rus was an instant success. That, uh, that's everything right there. Because that's going to tie back into uh, my main focus with the uh, Vade Rus. The Vedic, uh, the 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 origins, the origin points, the the pagans and the magans. This firebird is is, is a fiery sphere, but uh, this fire is happening within so many of us, so many people, and. Um, it makes its way into our life um, as we clear away the garbage and the bullshit. The fire and the connectivity is is engaged and felt more and more clearly. So I keep telling people, like, keep that fire fucking burning. Passing the torch along to one another. You're not alone in what you uh, may be going through, even though you feel may feel very alone. And that's for a purpose, and it's so that you can go into the darkness and realize the light that you are, and the light that you share, just just in being you. So to whoever may see this, thank you for being you because that brings a new awareness and a new perspective into the collective. And uh, it's beautiful. You are beautiful just just by being you. You don't need to be anything else. Yes, it's it's awesome and, and great, a great endeavor to uh, want to be more and to become more, to become more basically to align ourselves with, with truth more and more. And this is kind of, uh, you, will, you will see this termed, called, you know, embettering ourselves or just bettering ourselves. But, but it's just, it's this refinement process that, that, I, that I mentioned. It's the refinement that's happening, the transmutation And no one else necessarily needs to be involved with this, unless you so choose. You re remember, you have the choice here. But ultimately, what what needs to be accessed and engaged is this direct connection with you and the all that is, in a dissolving effect, so that you realize. Yourself as the self. It is a process, and, and we out you, supporting your ass. So keep on keeping on, and keep on feeling deeply, and know that you're not alone in this. Deep, deep love and appreciation. For people feeling deeply. Keep doing your thing. We feel you and we are you. Peace.